what's the best business card in the world? A book, of course. And Michael Levin will show you how to have one, either by doing it yourself or using his services. Check this out. It will rock your world, I promise. I can't believe the amount of information he was willing to share. Enjoy. Hey there, it's Tim O'Keefe again, Spider Juice Technologies, and uh, we are here today with Michael Levin, the business ghost. Uh, he is one of the most established ghost writers in the nation, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, Michael Levin has written, co-written, or ghost-written more than 100 books, of which 11 are national bestsellers, and he's even been on ABC's Shark Tank on January 20th of 2012. 2012. In the past, Michael has published with Simon Schuster, Random House, St. Martin's Press, Putnam Berkeley, and many other houses. His works have been optioned for film even, and TV by Steven Soderbergh, Paramount, HBO, Disney, ABC, and others. Uh, he's made contributions to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Politico, LA Times, Boston Globe, and on and on and on. He's out there. Uh, and as an Amherst College and Columbia Law School graduate, Michael served for many years as a member of the prestigious Authors Guild Council and as treasurer of the Authors Guild Foundation. He currently resides with his wife and four children in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, Michael Levin. How are you? I'm good, Tim. I've got to tell you, I get really tired when I hear you read that biography. I sit there and I say, oh, my God, that sounds exhausting. You know, but, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> A, a, a lifetime career within, like, what, a minute? I'm <laughs> I know. It's, it's like, am I dead? Is this my funeral? But it's all good. Right. Totally, right? Exactly. So how do you become a ghost writer? What is that even? Well, basically, it's a great question. Uh, somebody needs you to write a book, and you're a writer, and you don't have your name on the book, but you have, the name on, you have your name on the check. So... You know, you're basically hired to do a job to facilitate the uh, the ideas, to get the ideas across that a uh, an individual has, and it's typically not the highest and best use of most people's time to do their own writing, even if they can write and like to write, uh, and even if they write other things, books are different animals. So they bring in someone like me so that they can make their book happen. And how you become one, um, really briefly, I was at uh, the bar mitzvah of the grandson of a cousin of mine who was in his 60s at the time and he was one of Schindler's Jews he'd been saved by Schindler in, in the war in the concentration wow. camps and he's up there you know telling the story of how when you know he was a teenager he never dreamt he'd see the day his own you know grandson blah 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 and everybody's crying except the kid who's you know laughing and goofing with his buddies because they don't really see the uh, uh, importance of the significance of what's going on so you know, he comes down off the speech and he looks at me and he, my cousin, and he looks at me like, we got to do a book. And that's how my career started. And it was a hundred by, you know, what you read is, oh, it's, it's over 300 now. My company, is, Business Ghost, has done more than 300 books for, you know, memoirs and a lot of business books, a lot of books to help people get thought leadership. But, uh, it's, you know, but it all started with that bar mitzvah. So. Oh, interesting. Now, are, are there any books that, uh, are you allowed to say, what you've ghostwritten, or is that kind yeah. of... Uh... In a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm on as a co-writer, which means that I have, I have uh, credit, or co you know, co-author credit on the book. And okay. uh, those include Dave Winfield, Baseball Hall of Famer, uh, Pat Summerall, the late great football announcer, uh, Michael Gerber, who created the E-Myth. I did not write the E-Myth, but I've done other projects with him. Uh, Jay Abraham, who's a big uh, uh, marketing guru. I worked with Damon John for a while, Bruno Tonioli of uh, Shark Tank. I'm sorry, of um, Dancing with the Stars. And just a whole lot of folks. So uh, I, 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 I edited Zig Ziglar's final book, and I'm a big Zig Ziglar fan. So that was, I got to have lunch with him. And, you know, if you, oh, love, cool. if you love somebody and, they, and you really resonate with them and then you get to work with them, that's just... Uh, that was uh, one of the greatest moments ever for me. So those are some of the projects. And so what, how do you, well, let me start from here. Let me, let me start from here. So this presupposes that, uh, that people are going to write a book, but, but, you know, maybe I'm a, uh, I'm a business owner, uh, entrepreneur, uh, startup, whatever. 
why do I need a book? Well, you know, you don't need a book, but on the other hand, you don't need to make a living. So yeah, you need a book. I mean, the reality is this. Uh, the Internet commoditizes everyone. It turns everyone into a commodity, and when you're a commodity, you're just judged on price. Why should I hire you when I've got 93 other options? It used to be that buyers had very few options. They just had whatever was within five miles of their brick-and-mortar location. Today, because of the Internet, people have a million options. So the question is, how do you stand out, especially when everybody in a given field has a website that, and they all look exactly the same? We do a lot of work with financial advisors, for example, and you could switch out in the middle of the night or even in the middle of the afternoon one financial advisor's website for another, and as, you know, you'll end up with the same Viagra couples on the home page, <laughs> you know, the older you know, couple holding hands and bicycle for two on the beach at sunset, and you'll have the same group of carefully mixed ethnicity uh, people, very nicely attired in business clothing, shaking hands and smiling over a business table. What does that even mean? So everybody's websites look exactly the same. Everybody's marketing leaves behinds look exactly the same. So how do you differentiate yourself? How do you apply your freak flag? How do you look the slightest bit special or distinct or unique in a, in, a, in a universe where everybody's got the same stupid website? And the answer is you have to have a book. If you, that's the only way you can tell your story in full and with a vehicle that commands universal respect. People don't even read books today. So the fact that you've written one, it's like you're a priest in medieval times. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is the smartest man or woman in the room. How could I go anywhere? And the other thing a book does is that it convinces the spouse or the other decision makers. And I can tell you, I don't know if you're married, but I am. And when you're married, yes. you tell your wife, I found, I, what happens when you tell your wife, I found the guy? She, you know, she starts rolling her eyes. Yeah, like last time, like that other guy. Yeah, well, it's going to be different this time. So the whole point is that when you have a book, it's an opportunity to have the buyer convince either the spouse or the other co-decision makers that you are the person. And there's nothing more formidable or powerful than having – if you have to go up against a competitor who has a book as a leave behind and you don't, uh, you're not getting the sale. So that's the shortest reason why it's – and then also when you have a book, you can get speaking. You can get media attention. You can do TV and radio. You now have clips that you can put on your website. If you're on the local NBC affiliate, you can put the NBC logo on your website, and it can sit there forever. You can make your book a bestseller, and then it can say on your website, Amazon or, uh, or Barnes & Noble bestseller. That's easy to do. You can use the book as a um, – uh, you can just move you – know, you, can, you can take the book and send it to 100 prospects, and, 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 and X number are going to call back, and they sure wouldn't have called back in that number if you were just cold called. It's, it's really limitless the way you can slice and dice the marketing value of a book and if you don't have one and your competitor does, it's going to be a long day. Sounds like it is just a gift that keeps on giving over time. It just never will run out. Uh, yeah. So how do, how, how do I, I want, to, I want to write a book. How do I start? Well, if you want to do it without us, I'll tell you how we do it. And, and, and uh, basically you have to sit down and recognize I'm not writing for everyone in the world. There are, everything is niche today. You're writing to a specific niche so you want to say to yourself, who is my primary audience? What's the center of the bullseye for me? Who are my check writers? Who are most likely to hire me? And what, what's the lowest hanging fruit? And then, you, and, then, and then once you've determined the specific audience or key audiences for your book, you then ask yourself, uh, 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 um, what next step do I want them to take with me? And once you've determined that, maybe you want to get a meeting with them. Maybe they want a certain amount of – you want to get have a certain amount of money under – maybe – you want to sell them a certain kind of insurance policy. Maybe you want them to invest in your business. I don't know. But whatever it is, what body of knowledge would convince people in that niche audience to take that next step with you? And you use that to create the table of contents and uh, to create a structure, a, a, an intelligent flow of information from you to the reader. That's what a table of contents is. And now you're thinking strategically. Because the average business person who's been in the business world for 10, 15 years could write a dozen different books. But the question, the real question is, what's the one that's going to be most strategic and useful for you right now? And that's the one that's going to attract people in your niche market to do business with you. So that's, and then what we do is after that happens, we interview the client an hour. We, everybody's got an hour a week for something important. And if it's for six, ten weeks, we can get about 15 pages of book out of every hour-long conversation. And we tell our clients, just do a file dump. Tell us everything you've ever known, thought, believed, seen, heard of, whatever. 
just dump it all out on us and we'll put it in order. And then we have the chapters back to them two weeks after the call so that they can say, I love this, hated that, do more of this, do less of that, whatever. And then, and then after that, um, and then after that, we, we, uh, we edit and we publish, we do the book as a physical book. We do it as a paperback or hardcover. We do it as an ebook. We put it up on Amazon. We put it on barnesandnoble.com. Uh, we, we put it up as an ebook and a, and a physical book. And we have something really, really cool now. We're able to offer our <clears throat> clients. We're able to put the book, the book cover, up on the NASDAQ electronic billboard in Times Square and then take a picture of it and have a NASDAQ, have a press release go out on the NASDAQ uh, wire. And what's really cool is you get a picture of your book up on that huge screen in Times Square, and that's just something that you can have on your website forever. So, you know, so that, <laughs> that's pretty much how it is. So that, that's, that's how it works. Oh, that's wow. That's that's pretty cool. So, okay. So you're assuming, you know, that I, the business owner, have something to say. But I'm sure, just like I've I've been, you know, in the online publishing, I've been begging clients for for years, uh, going pre pre Facebook, pre you know social media. Back in the old blogging days, uh, please write, produce content, and they just get stuck, you know. So now you're talking about a book. What would you say over, you said, I think six weeks, I could afford an hour. What is it that uh, you suggest I lay out there, and how do I lay it out? Do I have to type it out, or do I dictate it? No, or? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, first of all, don't write a word because writing is going to kill you. It's going to paralyze you. You're like, oh, my God, I'm stepping my yeah. toe in Hemingway's pond. So I do not like, actually I, I would writing. say it's like doing a, re- a report. you got a report due in high school or college tomorrow, yeah. and you haven't started yet. <laughs> yeah, of course. It just brings back. And the other thing is that people have memories of, of turning in a paper when they're in grade school or elementary school or, or middle school, and they think, oh, the teacher's going to love this, and then it comes back swimming in red ink. And you know what they say to themselves? I don't know how to write. I'm not a writer. I'm, and yep. they just kind of, they, they punt. You know, they just, get, uh, they just get so depressed. So, you know, uh, if, if, that's, if that's how it's going, you're going to be miserable. And if you're going to be miserable, um, then, then, then why bother? So I say don't write a word. Instead, just have somebody interview you. Whether, you know, you hire business ghosts and we do it, or you get somebody in your, in your firm or group where you just hire a really smart graduate student from the communications or media or, or journalism department of the university, you know, down the street. Have somebody interview you, and once you've got that person interviewing you, then have that same person take that interview and turn it into a 10- to 15-page essay on what you said, and that becomes the chapter. You know, I mean, people can hire us to do it, and we'll do it, and we'll do it great. But the thing is that if you kind of want to do the DIY approach and save a few bucks, Knock yourself out. Uh, you know, it's not that different from what we do. That's interesting. So that, that's, that's a great approach. What happens now that I have a series of these essays from the college intern or from, uh, or from you, what's next? I mean, it's, it, it gets – I always thought that you have to – in the traditional way that you get an editor and it gets all gummy after that – what, is, yeah, is that, forget about forget about editors. What you want to do is is just you just want to make sure that the thing is cleanly written, and uh, and that it and that there's a sense of flow from one chapter to the next, so that it's not disjointed and and suddenly how did we get here, you know? So so that's the um, that's the basic thought is that it's got to flow, and and yeah, you do you do you you will need an editor, but you don't want to let it get uh, you know uh, get all crazy, so. Um, you know, once you've got it edited, then you, then you can produce it. And uh, for clients, for people who don't want to, uh, you know, use Business Ghost, they can go to CreateSpace. And for a very small amount of money, CreateSpace will publish your book, and they'll put it up on Amazon as an e-book and as a physical book. It's not going to look nearly as nice as our books, but it's not going to cost nearly as much. So, I mean, not that we're crazy, but the thing is that, you know, you can drive a Kia or you can, or you can drive a Lexus, you know. It's, it's, yeah. You can stay at a Motel 6 or you can stay at a Ritz-Carlton. It's really your call. Right, um, right. Sure. Well, I appreciate you being transparent about that, too, because uh, 
obviously, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a huge difference with you guys than a college intern. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I, look, I, I don't know what's going on on college campuses, but I think that they're drinking and having too much fun because writing is a lost art. You know, uh, I, I would, I mean, my, my writers, I have writers in their mid-20s uh, who are fabulous, but they're one in a million. So if you're going to get somebody, get somebody great. You know, spend the money. You know what? You just you, you made a point that uh, it's kind of a side side note. Uh, last night, I had a cousin uh, come by, and they're staying for a couple of days, and they brought a uh, box of letters that my grandparents wrote to each other in 1929 at the age of wow. 18. And we were talking about that, that kids don't know how to write. Here's two 18 and 19-year-olds writing, courting each other through, le- through the letter, through cursive, and absolutely beautiful writing. And writing that, I mean, these are two kids from Missouri, right? And, and un, you know, just high school education and writing better than, than most people that, than I've ever met. And I, I was blown away. And so, yeah, it's a lost start, without a doubt. Um, without a doubt. We've lost something along the way. Um, so, okay, so we, 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 have the, we have the product. You're ready to rock and roll. Is, do you get me like, uh, and, and I don't even know the big name, what is it, Random House? Do, uh, isn't there a process with that? Do I go to Random House or get it? Uh, published through one of those big guys, or or do I just go to Amazon and and now I'm can do I have to have a big guy? I guess is the question, or can I just yeah. go to Amazon? Okay, you're asking you're asking a very very important question. The answer would have been different five years ago. Today there is absolutely no difference uh, for the with the with regard to the perception of a book that is published by a major publisher or that is published independently. And I'll say it again because it's so important. There is no difference in perception of quality or importance, uh, whether it's done by Amazon and whether it's done by uh, a random house or Simon Issue. There are a few reasons for this. Okay, the first thing is that unless you're already famous and have a national brand, it doesn't matter how good your content is, you're not going to get a deal with a major house. They're only interested, the Simon and Schuster's and random houses are only interested in people who already have a national platform. And when I say a national platform, I mean they're already on the Today Show. Uh, they already are doing a keynote a week. They're already uh, followed by 75,000 people on Twitter and so on. If you don't have the massive social media following, if you don't have the television exposure, if you don't have the, uh, that big marketing platform behind you, don't even bother with trying to get an agent or a publisher. The answer is going to be no. And they don't care how good your content is. If you've got two people and one has great content and the other has a great marketing funnel, guess who gets the deal? I'm going to tell you straight, the publishers are whores. The major publishers are absolute whores, and they don't care a darn about the quality of your content. They have no interest in that. So, uh, so on top of that, what do you really need them for? It's going to add a year to a year and a half of delay. I mean, I've got, I've got a publisher for books that I'm bringing out myself, I mean, my own books. And I just got a note today. The first book is going to be published next January. And of the three books, the second one is going to be published in, I think they said October, and they haven't set the date for the third one. I mean, these are 2017. What, what, what's the waiting for? The books are written. You could publish them. You could push the button. We'll come out. To, that's how they operate. So, you know, for business people, money is time. Time is money. Why do you want to wait a year to have a book come out when it could be working for you tomorrow or with us 60 days after it's written. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see – and then on top of that, yeah, well, they'll get your books in the bookstores. What is it? So, so do we. We get our clients' books in the bookstores. And what good is that really to have a book in a bookstore? You've got to have somebody in your niche audience stumbling into a book. Who even goes to bookstores? Who can even find a bookstore today? I, w- I was Barnes just going to say that. Yeah. You know, Barnes & Noble's the, the last chain standing. They're closing their bookstores at the rate of 10% a year. They've got a great cash position, but they're, you know, they're shutting their bookstores because they can't sell books. Okay, so what's the, what's the, what's the benefit uh, that your book is going to be in a books for for six weeks, and then the six or eight weeks are up, and then they take it out and, and ship it back to the publisher, 
and they look at you and say, oh, you don't know how to sell books. The major publishers don't know how to sell books. I mean, I don't want to go off on too much of a tear about this, but the reality is that any marketing that happens for a book is going to be done by the author and not the publisher. And it's a dirty little secret of the publishing industry. So, you know, as long as you need your book as a leave behind, I mean, who cares if you sell one copy? Your whole book is to, I always tell my clients, you don't go into the book business. It's a bad business. Trust me. <laughs> as uh, Trump says, believe me. You know, yeah, but your, yeah. business, your business, use the book to build your business. And if you're doing that, you're not worried about book sales. You're, you're worried about, you should be worried about how do I get my book into the hands of people in my niche market? And there are a lot of ways to do that. Focus on that. Bring the book out now. Don't wait a year, year and a half. And, and, it's, and you're not even going to sniff from a major publisher anyway. So, you know, what's the big deal? It's like you said, it's perception. You're going after perception, so not sales. It's, right? I mean. Right. That's it. You're going after the. And the other thing is that when you do a book, you get to d demonstrate just how unique you are to the world. And the publisher's attitude is, we want something that's going to hit the broadest possible market because we want to sell books. And that's a business model. Your business model is selling your services, selling insurance, selling financial services, uh, uh, getting people, to, as I said, to invest in a business, uh, uh, explaining your story to stakeholders, whatever. And you may not even need to sell one copy of a book, but the thing is that if you have to dilute your message in order to satisfy the needs of the publisher, which are not aligned with yours, then why are you even bothering? But the thing is that when it's your book, you control the beginning, the middle, and the end. You control every comma and semicolon. Why would you want to give that up? Wow, interesting. It also sounds like it's, it is kind of the great equalizer in that the average guy who never could have imagined having a voice now has a voice. Yeah. It's really true. It's an Arab spring. It's an Arab spring for business people. You know, they're, they're, the gatekeepers have uh, have have deserted the village, and and now you can you can you can say whatever you want without. It's, it's called disintermediation, the process of removing um, uh, re removing gatekeepers, and you can go out there and say what you want to say. And the other thing is that on Amazon, um, a book that we publish has the exact same uh, page as a book published by Simon & Schuster or Random House. It comes up looking exactly the same. There's the picture of the book. There's the ranking. Uh, there are the, the, the comments about it. There's the button, button to push to order the copy. You know, nothing – so it's, it's, it's no different. So when you talk about it being a great equalizer, Tim, you're right on the money. When you have a book, you look at just as big as anybody else online and a million times bigger than all the people out there in your field who didn't have the courage to do a book. Wow. You know, it's been a short amount of time, but you've rocked. I mean, you've given so much information that I think, I mean, certainly I thought I knew uh, a lot, but you've taught me a bunch, and I'm sure someone who's never even thought about a book or even maybe thought, well, I, could, I might like to do a book, but I could never do it. Well, you just found out how. Uh, either through uh, uh, the the your your business or the the DIY way or whatever, you just got laid some gold nuggets. Go out and do it. So, how do we get in touch with you? How do we find you? Are you on social media? Yeah, a little bit. I, I you know I'm old school. I just want you to either call me or send me an email. It's, it's the website. <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I just. <laughs> I got to tell you, I think, I mean, I don't know. I think Twitter is, I think all that stuff is, uh, I, I, I've yet to find a, a business person who, uh, uh, with a, with, you know, in, in, any, in any field uh, that, you know, where the customers are over 35, who's made a nickel off social media. Um, I, if it, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm waiting. Uh, my email is michael at businessghost.com. The yeah. website is businessghost.com. And the, uh, the, the phone number is 800 637 Six eight five six, and I'll say it again. It's eight hundred six three seven six eight five six. The simplest thing is just go to Business Ghost, and you'll find all our contact information right there. And I'd love to. Yeah, hear I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. There's all kinds of good stuff on there. That's uh, yeah. great, great reading. Lots of great testimonials too um, that are uh, popping up. You Thank definitely you. are uh, have, have been around. A little bit, you know, long enough to. 
long enough to know how to do it the right way for our clients, and that's what it's all about. So. Well, Michael, I appreciate your time. You've given us a load of gold today, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words, Sam. You asked great questions. It was a great pleasure, and I hope it was useful to the listeners. That's the main thing. Absolutely. Uh, best of luck to you, my friend, and you have a great day. Thanks. You too. Thanks for taking the time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Be well. Thank you.